Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning students. Good morning sir. Morning, sir. How are you today? I'm fine sir, thank you. And you? Fine. Yeah, fine, sir. Fine, sir. fine, thank you. And How about you sir? Students who are not joining today will be joining in the next meeting and I hope who join who is who are joining this class today you will be granted health and happiness in your life okay um, so um, let me start al basmala bismillahirrahmanirrahim bismillahirrahmanirrahim okay so the topic today it's about uh, grammar and uh, not grammar but toffel okay so we're going to talk about toffel Okay, let me find the file first. Right, so we're going to talk about uh, how to do a listening, how to do the listening in TOEFL exam. Okay, some cases, students got some problem in answering the question, especially in listening. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you tips and tricks. Yeah, tips and tricks, how to do listening. Okay. So the objective at the end of this presentation or this class, students are able to know the tricks of answering English listening questions. And also you will be able to discover the various of listening questions. Number three, you will understand the detail or specific information presented in listening. Okay, and then the last, you'll be able to distinguish the variety of listening questions. So before that, let's uh, review, uh, let's go back. Oh, I'd like to remind you again what TOEFL is. You, understand, you know what is TOEFL? What is TOEFL stands for? What is TOEFL? What is TOEFL? What does TOEFL stand for? Kepanjangan apa itu TOEFL? Test of English as Foreign Language. That's right. So here, yeah, I write it to you already. TOEFL is Test of English as a Foreign Language. So. So the TOEFL test is only for the foreign students. Yeah, foreigns, not for not uh, not native speakers, not American, not Australian, or not uh, British. Yeah, English people because they speak English. Yeah. So TOEFL is for foreign foreigners. So we are foreigners because we don't speak English. So English is our foreign language. For, uh, yeah, English is as a foreign language here in Indonesia. So how many kinds of TOEFL do you know? How many kinds of TOEFL do you know? Do you know how many kinds of TOEFL? Paper-based and computer-based. Computer-based, paper-based. Only two? I only know two. Okay, so well actually we're going to talk about three here. Okay, the first is right, Amanda, what you said before, Paper-based TOEFL, that is the one that you do a lot here in our school. Yeah, that's what we call paper-based TOEFL. I mean, the TOEFL is based on paper. I mean, you are answering the TOEFL uh, on, on paper, okay? So, so how is the exam for paper-based TOEFL? It has three parts, yeah, listening, reading, and grammar. It is quite easier yeah compared to other types yeah because it's uh, the part is only listening reading and grammar even though it's only listening reading and grammar but some students are having problem yeah so how much is if you are very good yeah if you are very good if you are very fluent in speaking english how much is the maximum score that you could get in TOEFL, PBT, or we call PBT, yeah, paper-based TOEFL. So the maximum score is 677. 
So if you can get 677, you are excellent. You speak English very well. But don't worry, yeah. If you are uh, applying for scholarship, yeah, some scholarship, some universities, they require, I think I, they will not re require a 677. Yeah, some of the universities, they need only 500 minimum. 500 minimum or some others, universities, they require 550. So they make sure if you are, a, uh, if you want to continue your education somewhere, yeah. So make sure that you can get 600, uh, not 550, that will be safe, yeah. 550, but if you can get 677, it will be excellent, right? So this is, uh, but the problem is, most of the universities, most of the institution now, they don't use paper-based TOEFL now, yeah. Most of the of the universities now they don't use yeah paper-based TOEFL, yeah paper-based TOEFL, you know, not uh, very common now, now, but still used in some university. But most of universities they require uh, not this TOEFL, yeah. But the other TOEFL, I'm going, we're, going to, we're going to talk about that later. So the second is computer-based TOEFL, computer-based TOEFL, yeah, or it can be shortened as CBT, yeah, computer-based TOEFL. How many sections? There are four sections, listening, grammar, reading, and writing. So the additional is writing, yeah. Listening, grammar, and reading comprehension, you got it in paper-based TOEFL, but you don't have writing. But computer-based TOEFL, you have writing here. Okay. And how much is the maximum point that you can score or you can reach in the TOEFL CBT? Okay, the maximum is 300. Okay. Okay, and the next is that this one is the, the most used now. Yeah, most universities require this. Yeah, internet based TOEFL, or it can be shortened as IBT. How many sections? There are four sections listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So you will not find grammar here. Uh, listening, speaking. That will be a such interview there. You're going to talk. Yeah, speaking and then reading comprehension and also writing. Yeah, so this is the total score is 120. Okay, these are kind of TOEFL. So there are three kinds of TOEFL test. The first one is paper-based TOEFL. And then the, the second is, what is the number two? Computer-based TOEFL. Computer -based. Yeah, three is internet-based TOEFL. So if you want to take a TOEFL, so you will not waste your money. So better you use, you take internet-based TOEFL. So if, for example, like you want to go abroad for education, so I will, I will suggest you to take internet-based TOEFL. Otherwise you will waste your money because some of universities, they accept IBT, not PBT. I'm afraid if you take PBT, you did it and then you paid it, but the certificate is not used or they don't accept that, so then you waste your money. So better you take internet-based TOEFL. Oh, which one is harder? I think internet-based TOEFL is a bit harder than PBT. Uh, PBT, you have a grammar. Grammar is quite easy, right? writing and speaking. So maybe when you are doing this, it take more time, right? Concentration. Okay, so this is kind of TOEFL. The next is, uh, okay, now I'm going to tell you kind of question in listening, a listening comprehension section, how to do listening now. Okay, so make sure when you are doing listening in TOEFL, there will be uh, three parts, part A, part B, and part C. And every part is different, okay? For example, like part A, there are 30 questions in this part, 
and then you will hear short talks or conversation followed by question related to the spoken topic. So in this part, uh, it is just like in your listening exam, yeah, listening question in mid exam or a semester exam. Okay, it is small talk or short talks or conversation, and there will be question related to the topic. So there will be 30 questions about this question. Yeah, there are 30 questions. And then part B is a bit harder, yeah, but less question. There will be eight questions in this part, and then you will hear two long dialogues followed by several questions. There will be two dialogues, dialogues, yeah. Yeah, there will be two dialogues. One dialogue will have four questions at once. Yeah, one dialogue. So the part A, you have only one one dialogue for one question. But part B, you will have two dialogues. But one dialogue for each dialogue will have will be followed by four questions. Yeah, one dialogue, four questions, and then the second dialogue. There will be four questions. So the total question will be four questions. And then part C, there are 12 questions in this part. And then you will hear a long monologue. Okay, part C is monologue. Part B is dialogue, conversation. And part C is monologue. And each monologue will be followed by several questions. Normally four questions. There will be if there are three monologue, then each monologue will have four questions. So the total question will be a uh, twelve question. So these are part uh, kind of question in listening comprehension. Part A, part B, and part C. And I believe you understand. Yeah, when you are doing the listening, uh, all kind of direction in listening, TOEFL. It will be similar. It will be same. Yeah. If you don't really need to listen to that listening, you can skip it and then you can focus on the option. Okay. We're gonna talk about that later. So the next is okay. This is the tip and strategies of answering listening questions. Right. So like I said at the beginning, be familiar with the directions. Yeah. Direction part A. What should you do? Part B. What should you do? Part C. What should you do? Like I said, part E, there will be 30 questions. One question is one dialogue. A one dialogue is one question. And then part B will be two, uh, there will be eight questions. And probably there will be two, two dialogue. Each dialogue will be four questions at once. And second dialogue also. And then part C, there will be like three monologues. Yeah, and then each monologue will be, have, uh, will be having four questions. So, you don't need if you are familiar with this then you can skip and then you better focus on the question or in the options so that's why i said be familiar with the directions yeah the direction will also be the same in every test TOEFL. every TOEFL test they will have the same uh directions i don't think you really need to listen to it if you understand it i mean if you are familiar then you don't need to do it you don't need to listen to the directions just focus on the question or the option yeah while it, it takes time i mean one minute or two minutes for direction so you can use your two minute or one minute to answer i mean not answering but check the option oh option b because you know if you are if, if you read the the option first that it will be easier for you to understand i mean to listen to the listening right so this is First tip, and the second tip is during direction was read, please see the answer choices that exist. So like I said before, yeah, you don't need to listen to the directions, but it is better to use your time to see the answer choices or the options. Yeah, oh, that will be this, that will be that, okay. Then we go to the next, number three, never empty the answer sheet. Yeah, I mean, when you are doing the exam of uh, TOEFL, yeah, never empty the answer sheet. Why? Because there will be no reduction in value. It means you make a wrong answer, your, your score will not be reduced. 
So who knows if you are stuck? Oh, I will I will answer that later. I will skip it. Don't don't do that. Okay, just try to answer. Yeah, who knows you are lucky. Yeah, try to answer. If you if you empty that, yeah, if you empty that or if you skip that, it be it will be totally a hundred percent wrong because it's empty. But if you try to answer, who knows if you are lucky, then you get a good answer. Okay, understand? Yeah, never empty the answer sheet. Okay, and then number four, to answer question in part A, focus on the second speaker. So, yeah, when you are answering the 30 question, the 30 question, the common things to do is focus on the second speaker. Yeah, yeah, uh, the speaker refer to the conclusion talk of the second speaker. Because the question normally will refer to the second speaker. So you have to focus on the second speaker. Okay, this is for the 30 question, part A. The next is uh, try not to choose the option you heard in the talks or conversation. Oh, you must be careful with that, this one, yeah. Sometimes we we try not to choose the option you heard in the talks or conversation. Why? Sometimes the answer of the question refer to the conclusion or idiom. Yeah, so then you have to focus on the conclusion. Yeah, not all, but some of the questions. So I just want to remind you, please be careful not to choose the option you heard in the talks or conversation. Because sometimes the question refer, uh, refer to the conclusion or the idiom. I hope you understand what idiom is. Idiom is uh, like, uh, can you tell me example of idiom? Who can tell me example of idiom in English? Somebody can tell me? Like, Cats and dogs. Yes. Cats and dogs. Yes. Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. It is raining like cat and dog. What does it mean cat and dog? Gemuruh. Yeah, hujan lebat, yeah. Cat and dog, yeah, hujan lebat. It means hujan lebat. Or piece of cheese, piece of cake. What does it mean piece of cake? Mudah sekali. Yeah, it's very easy. That this is kind of idiom. And sometimes, yeah, the the answer of the question refer to the conclusion or e. Idiom, yeah, not always to focus on what is the conversation, but sometimes you have to conclude what is the conclusion. Okay, and another thing is you have to be careful, try not to choose the option you heard in the talk. Yeah, sometimes it's not necessary, uh, I mean, you must be careful when, when, uh, when listening to the dialogue. Why? The answer refers to oronyms. What does it mean oronyms? Oronym is word having similar utterance. So words, the word is having similar utterance. Utterance is pengucapan or pronunciation. Jadi pengucapannya itu mirip. If you're not sure uh, association, for example, like association, 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 yeah. assassination, association, and assassination. It sounds similar, but the meaning is quite different. So be careful with that, okay? Yeah, it means we have to focus on the listening. I mean, the, the pronunciation. Ah, the pronunciation is assassination and association. It's very similar, but the meaning is different. Okay, that number two is a similar, same. Okay, now in part B and C, you need to read the option first in order to get a clue about the topic that will be spoken. So when you are doing part B and part C, because it's going to be long dialogue, yeah? That's why at the beginning I said it's better to use your time to read the option when the direction is spoken. Yeah, when direction is spoken, you don't need to listen to it because you know you know that already. That's why make sure that you are familiar with the all the direction in TOEFL will be similar, will be same. So you don't need to listen to it. Then it's better to use your time to read the option. Yeah, because there will be long dialogue. And there will be four questions at once. Then you need to be careful, yeah, 
better you have to use your time in reading the the option and then after reading the whole option you can start listening to the conversation and guess the correct answer uh, if you if you familiar with the option already oh and then you can find out you can you can uh, find uh, in the dialogue the answer of that question Okay, so and number three is listen carefully to the conversation and talk. So you have to really concentrate to hear what was said in the tape recorder because it's only be, it's it's played only one time. All the question in listening is it's spoken only once, no repetition. It's a quite different from uh, or national examination. In national examination, you. Uh, the the listening is spoken twice, but in TOEFL it's to, it's spoken only once, so no repetition. So do not expect that will be repeat re repetition. No, it will not be repeated. Okay, so it's it's spoken only once, not twice. Okay, so what are kind of question that you will find in in TOEFL listening? Yeah. These are kind of questions in listening section. Okay, question about topic of conversation. First is, uh, there are four here. Question about topic of conversation. There are four questions here. There are four examples. Okay, well, number one, the question will be, what is the topic of the conversation? This is very common. Yeah, what is the topic of the conversation? And the question, another question, it can be, what is the talk about? Yeah, same. Yeah. Or another example is what do the speaker talk about? Yeah, same. It means talking about the topic, right? Then number four, what is the topic of the talk? I think it's very familiar because you have you got it already a lot in your examination. Okay, the next is question about main idea of conversation. Sometimes it can be asked. You can, can be questioned about main idea of the conversation. Yeah. What are the kind of question? Yeah. Number one, what is the main idea of the talk? And what are the speakers talking about? And what are the speakers discussing about? And what is the talk mainly about? I think it's also very familiar, right? All right. So these are kind of question. And what is the next question? Yeah. Okay. Now the question about suggestion or advices. Yeah, it's very common. Yeah, in 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 doing TOEFL test, the question will be asked, uh, will ask you about suggestion or advice. Will be will be talking about suggestion or advices. Yeah, what are the kind of the question? The question will be like, what does the woman or what was what does the man suggest? Number two, what should the woman or what should the man do? Yeah, what should the woman or what should the man do? Okay, we are going to have the question later. Yeah, question about implication. What implication? What implies on the talk? Apa yang tersirat? Yeah, jadi what what implies on the talks? Apa kalau uh, dalam percakapan itu apa yang tersirat dalam percakapan itu? Okay, what does the man or the woman imply or mean? Yeah. What does the man mean? What does the woman mean? Or what does the, the, the man imply? Mean it mean. Yeah, number two, what does the statement imply? The statement mean what? What does the statement mean? Okay. And number three, what does the man or the woman mean? So just similar. Okay, same. Same thing. Another question is about conclusions. Example like what can you infer from the woman's or man's statement? Another question, what is the conclusion of the talk? And what can we conclude from the conversation? Yeah, what can you conclude? Conclude is menyimpulkan, yeah, from the conversation. Right, so next question is, question about the detailed information. Yeah, the detailed information, it means the, the, the specific information that you can find in the dialogue or the monologue. Yeah, the question can be, where did the conversation probably take place? That's what is it in very common too. Yeah, where does the conversation probably take place? If they are buying something like a juice or 
Uh, what is that fried chicken? For sure, the, the conversations uh, take place in the restaurant, right? Okay, if they buy rice and sugar, where does the conversation take place? Can you answer me? They buy rice and sugar. Where does the conversation take place? At restaurant, sir. Uh, is it in the restaurant? I mean, they buy sugar, sugar, and rice, or oil, oil. In the market. Market, sir. In the market or in the grocery store, okay? Grocery store, ba toko, toko apa namanya itu ya? Toko sembakau, ya? Grocery store, okay? That is an example. And what was the talk being held? Where did it happen? How did the woman or men do that? Who does not come to the meeting? What does the man or woman say? So this is a kind of detailed information that can be asked in listening. And the last is question about purposes. Tujuan, right? What is the purpose of the talk? Why does the woman talk about it? Yeah, this is a kind of question. Okay, now we are going to practice, but you cannot do listening, right? I mean, I'm gonna give you the, because I'm not sure how to do it here. So we're gonna do this. Ah, we still have, sorry, we still have uh, another question, kind of question, yeah. Question about, opi it can be, question can be about opinion, thought, or feel, yeah. Opinion and thought is quite similar and feel, okay. What is the man or woman opinion about the party? What is his impression about the exhibition? Impression is kesan. What does the man feel about it? And then how does the woman see the case? And what does the man think about someone? Ani, Budi, or someone else, okay? And question about the title. What is the best title of the talk? What is the appropriate title of the talk? Appropriate is, appropriate title, it means it's judul yang pantas atau judul yang tepat. And then the last is question about speaker. Who is the suggestion addressed to? Ya, kepada siapa uh, saran itu ditujukan? Ya, who is the suggestion addressed to? And number two, whom is the speaker talk to? And number three, who is the man? Uh, who is the woman? Maybe he is a teacher. Is a director, is a principal, or someone else, or police. Right, so now we're going to practice to answer the question, okay? All right, focus on the second. This is uh, an example of question, focus on the second speaker. Speaker remark. Right, the question is this. Yeah, well, we're supposed to have the listening, but unfortunately, we don't have the listening here. So, can you really make it quick? Man, John couldn't get a good score this time. And woman, yes, he didn't do his best in the class. And then Narata will say, what does the woman say about John? What's the second speaker? Yeah, this is an example of, uh, we have to focus on the second speaker remark. Remark is speech. What does the woman say about John? What is the answer? D, sir. Which is the answer? D. D? D. He didn't try his best in the class. Yes or no? Yeah. He didn't do his best in the class. He didn't try his best in the class. So switching here, do and try is quite similar, right? If you choose A, John always got good score in the classes. No. John, he forgot to pick his score. No. Because second speaker, yeah? Talk about this and he didn't want to get a good score. Okay, the answer is he didn't try his best in the class. Right, so choose the option in synonym. So now we are talking about the question in synonym. Ready? Well, I'm supposed to read it, but unfortunately we don't have it. Okay, maybe I can read it. Yeah, I can read it and then you can guess, okay? You can guess. You can guess the the answer. 
All right, so let me find it first. Okay, so you can, uh, while I'm checking the, the listening, you can read the options and then it will gonna be very quick, yeah. And there is no repetition. Oh yeah, there is no repetition. The question will be spoken once. Okay. Right, the question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. The question is, uh, woman, it's woman, yeah. Why is Jen so nervous? And then, man, she's going to perform her paper in the seminar. The narrator, what does the man say about Jane? Can you answer now? B, sir. What is the answer? B, sir. She's going to lead a seminar. She is going? To lead a seminar. Is it B or C? Or B? C. B. You said B? C. B or C or D or A? Oh my God. Okay, I'm going to repeat once again. Well, next, next question, there will be no repetition, okay? So listen carefully. Woman, why is Jen so nervous? And then the man answer, she's going to perform her paper in the seminar. What does the man say about Jane? C. What is the answer? Present her project in the seminar. Yeah, she will present her project in the seminar. Okay, here is using uh, perform and present. Yeah, the synonym word is at the at the at the talk or the dialogue. The, in the dialogue, it is using the word perform. Yeah, she will perform her project in the seminar. Project and also paper in the in the dialogue. It said she will perform her paper in the seminar. So the answer here is she will present her project in seminar. So if oh, there is no paper here, there is no paper, it means so oh, the, the synonym is paper is project and perform is present, okay? Right, the next is, so it's this one, this is the, the talk, yeah. The next question. So now we have to avoid a familiar or similar utterance. So be careful. What do you do? You, do you remember what I mean? Utterance. What is utterance? What does it mean? Utterance. You still remember that? Apa itu artinya? Utterance. Pengucapan. Yeah. yeah. Pronunciation. Yeah. The pronunciation. So now we are avoiding a familiar or similar utterance. So be careful with the familiar and similar utterance. Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to read. The first speaker is man. Man, why did not Marilyn attend the meeting? And then the woman say, oh, she was searching instruments for our next project. And the narrator, what does the woman say about Marilyn? Okay, what is the answer? A, sir. Is it A? C, sir. A, A, B, or C, or D? A, yes? A, B, C, or D? Okay. She was searching instrument for our next project. So it means she was looking for, for the next the project. Next next job. Job. Yes, sir. B or A? A, sir. Searching A, instrument she was looking, looking for. for the needs for their, their, next, their job. next job. Okay, that's cool. That's right. Okay, now the next question is making a conclusion of who, what, and where questions. 
Okay, so I'm going to read very fast. Woman, can I get a glass of Coke and hamburger, please? Man, yes, a minute, please. And then the narrator, where does the conversation probably take place? A, sir. A, sir. Is it fast A? Fast food restaurant. Fast food restaurant. Yes, yes, sir. Right, and fast food restaurant, right. Very good. Okay, the next question. Now using what and who in passive sentence. Remember, passive sentence, okay? Kalimat passive. Okay, I'm going to read it very fast. Man, did Andrew go to the market this morning? And then the woman, yes, he did. He bought carrots and spinach. The narrator, what does the woman imply? Caesar. Caesar. Yes or no? What does the woman yes, sir. imply? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, some vegetables were bought by Andrew. Okay, this is using passive sen sentence. Okay. Right, now using negative sentence. <clears throat> Be careful. Woman, how did they finish the assignment that fast? And then the man, they didn't do it individually. And narrator, what does the man say about the assignment? Negative sentence, okay? What is the answer? They did it in group. They didn't do it. Uh, that's right. They did it in group. group. The sentence group. is in negative. You can see that the sen the dialogue is in negative. Yeah. They didn't do it individually, but the answer is in positive. They did it in group. Very good. That's right. Next is double negative sentence. So be careful with the double double negative sentence, woman. I can't believe to what Mr. Stewart did about the meeting, and then the man. Well, he doesn't like the unclean office to have a meeting. And the narrator, what does the man say about Mr. Stewart? Double negative sentence. You got it? Once again, I read, yeah? Woman, I cannot believe to to what Mr. Stewart did about the meeting. And then the man, well, he doesn't like the unclean office to have a meeting. The narrator, what does the man say about Mr. Stewart? What is the answer? The answer is? So C, you, sir. What is that? C. C. Yeah, C. Well, he doesn't like the unclean office. What does it mean? Two negative sentences here. This one, he does not like. This is negative and unclean, not clean. So it means there are two negative here. So what does the man say about Mr. Stewart? It means he might cancel the meeting. Yeah, that's right. So now using hardly, barely, and close to negative. Hampir tidak. Ya, artinya hardly itu hampir enggak sama sekali ya. Dilakukan tapi hampir tidak. Okay, the question is, the man, have you had have you had your dinner? And the woman say there is hardly any food in the refrigerator. The narrator, what does the woman imply? What's the answer? You got it. B. B. Is it B? So, using hardly any food in the refrigerator. What does it mean hardly? Hampir nggak ada makanan di kulkas. Berarti, ada apa tidak ada? Ada, tapi sedikit. Ada, tapi sedikit. That's right. So, which is the answer? D, sir. D. Yeah. She had dinner, but with only little food. That's right. B. A D, yeah. Okay, the next. Negative sentence in comparative. Comparative, yeah. Comparative is perbandingan. The next example is, what do you think of Annie? What do you think of Annie? And then a man, no one is more beautiful than she is. What does the man say about Annie? She is the most beautiful she of all. She is the she most beautiful. Is yeah, that's right. She is the most she beautiful is of all. Okay. That's right. Okay. Next is expression about agreement. I hope you understand agreement. Okay, you agree, yeah? The, ah, the question is already here. 
I think that the project is quite. I think that project is quite credible. So do I. What does the woman mean? So do I. Be sir. She agrees with the man. Yes sir. Be sir. He agrees with, with the, the man. man. The man. All right. So the next is. Do you, uh, now expression of unsure and suggestion. Gak yakin. Okay. I think we have. Number which what is the question here? What is the answer? What does the woman mean? It is going to be strict, isn't it? What does the woman mean? B, sir. Yeah, that is B. Okay, expression of suggestion. I can't meet up the deadline by tomorrow. Let's finish it today. What does the woman suggest? Let's finish it today. What does it mean? A, sir. A, finish A. the deadline finish today, the deadline together. today together. Right. Okay, right. So these are an example of question. There have, we have some more, but unfortunately, the, uh, I mean, the, the time is not enough. We have to finish now. Okay, so maybe we can talk about that again next meeting. If you still have a problem or a question, feel free to ask. Okay, at the end of the class, I hope more students will be joining our class next meeting. And we got to close our lesson by resetting Alhamdulillah. 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 Thank you for joining our class today. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, sir.